Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen I want to share with you my recipe for brioche that I absolutely love. This is my uncle Tony's recipe. We have made this together him and I. It's just so good. My uncle owns lots of restaurants like lots of different places in Italy and he used to own a really popular like um, sandwich shop if you will and he used to make these into buns and stuff them with like salami and provolone and they used to fly off the shelf which I'll share that with you in another video but today I just want to share with you the recipe for the bread. I love this recipe and you are going to love it. It makes for the most delicious soft pillowy sweet brioche in the entire world. So let's get going with the ingredients. In the bowl of my standing mixer I've got lots of flour and I've also got some salt. I also need some more flour, sugar, this is active dry yeast, you need some warm whole milk, lots of butter softened at room temperature, you need water, a little honey, and you'll need some eggs. Let's work on activating the yeast, shall we? To some warm water, I'm going to add a pinch of sugar, and I'm going to add my yeast. Now this is, needs to be activated, so I'm going to just set this aside, okay? I've been making this, um, I've been making this recipe, I made it like twice in the last week and a half because it's so good. I took one loaf, we, uh, we, you know, we ate what we wanted, and then I took the rest and I made an overnight French toast with it, and woo, so good. Um, and then you can take this to, and you can make whatever you want with it. You can make um, French toast, you can make bread pudding, uh, you can eat it as is like we like to do. I just added the sugar to my flour, and now I'm just going to let it sit here while my yeast foams and does its thing and then we will move on to the next step. That's what you are looking for. It's all foamy, it actually smells really yeasty. That's really important. Otherwise, if it's not there, uh, it could mean that your yeast is either too uh, it's expired or it's too cold or it's too hot. Either way, it could kill it. Let's talk eggs. Now, these are our eggs um, from our chicks. We are just so thankful that we were able to have our very own from fresh eggs in the backyard. And let me tell you, we've got like an acre of land <laughs> and they belong to the chicks. <laughs> they are so happy, they thrive. Um, our neighbors are really fantastic because they have chickens too. So it's the sweetest sight, especially when you see Mia running after her chickens and they're all like running. It's just, it's the best. It feels like a little part of Italy here. It's amazing. Right. For the recipe, you will need four large eggs. Now, I want you to see that when it comes to farm fresh eggs, they vary in sizes. This one's definitely bigger than that one. So I'm actually gonna use five because they're on a smaller side, but if you're using commercial eggs, you will want to just use uh, four. Um, there's just nothing like it, it's fantastic. We are, like I said, very, very happy um, with our eggs and our chicks, and we eat them every day, the eggs. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and add the eggs. Look how beautiful those yolks are. You know, our chicks get to see the sun, so they're happy and they provide the most golden yolks, which believe it or not, I didn't know that that's the reason why farm, farm fresh eggs or yolks are always so bright orange, just because the chicks get to see the sun. Didn't know that. Learn something new every day. All right, pop that on, a dough hook, and I'm just gonna let this start going, okay? I'll sh bring you back here in a bit to show you the next step because it's pretty important. Alright, so you see the dough is coming together. This is the time where you start adding little pats of butter, okay? Now, after you add about half a stick, you're going to start to see that your dough and the sides of the bowl is going to start getting greasy, obviously. That's when you start adding the additional flour. I'll show you in just a minute what I mean. And you don't want to stop, you got to keep going. Right? And you, I'm just going to use the same spoon. You see how it starts to get greasy on the outside right there? Okay, this is when you add more flour, okay? And you're going to just continue this process until, and you also want to add your tablespoon of honey ah, in this this time as well. Okay, so now I'm going to add more butter, more flour, and then you're just going to let this knead until you have a really beautiful, beautiful soft dough. I'll show you what it looks like when it gets there, but here I'll show you another 
what I mean over here. See, greasy, greasy, greasy. It needs more flour. So go ahead and do that until you've used up all of your butter and all of your flour and you're gonna let that knead for a while. And I'm also gonna take the wrappers of my butter and I'm gonna grease um, you know, two bowls or I, I like to use a nine by 13 in baking dish for doing this, but you can do whatever. So just keep doing that. All right, this is what your dough should look like, okay? It is so beautiful, so beautiful. I'm gonna cut this in half using a bench scraper here because this makes two loaves. If you wanna make one, cut the recipe in half. You'd be nuts. I don't know why you'd wanna make only one because this is so good. I mean, think like a cool fall breakfast morning. I mean, this isn't hard to do and it rises pretty quickly if, you, if your yeast is good. Put this in the oven in the afternoon, a little cappuccino. I mean, it's just phenomenal. I'm just gonna put this in an oiled nine by 13 baking dish. You can use two bowls. Um, I just always do this and it works out perfect. Okay, I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap and I'm going to let this rise for about an hour until it's doubled in volume. It'll be nice and chachon, it'll be nice and soft and big and beautiful. And then we move on to the next step. They look wonderful. It's been, I'll say, a little over an hour. Get them out of here. Oh, they smell so good. Just flatten it out just a little bit and I'm just gonna form one into a loaf. I'm gonna put it into my, this is my smaller dish. This is like an eight by four. I find that if I do this in a nine by five, it doesn't dome as much on top, which I like. And then this is technically, I believe a baba mold, baba la ram, but I like to use it for this as well because it makes a really beautiful loaf and they're both, they've both been sprayed with some nonstick spray. Pop this in here. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna take another piece of plastic wrap, is I'm gonna stick somewhere, I'm gonna stick this somewhere again for about 45 minutes or until the dough sort of like domes on the top of the pans and I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. After 45 minutes, this is what you are looking for. Now what I've got here is some egg wash, which is just one egg beaten with a little bit of milk. Look at the color of those yolks. I know, oven's nice and hot at 350. Now the egg wash is really crucial because this is what gives the brioche that real, that signature glossy brown top. Oh, it's just, it's so good. And it also acts like edible glue because I am gonna sprinkle some pearled sugar on top and it's gonna just give you that extra layer of delicious crunch and sweetness and I just love it. And we've said this uh, for a long time that every time I use pearled sugar, I think of my mother because she doesn't decorate or doesn't do anything fancy to anything she bakes, but she always tops things with pearl sugar and uh, that's her effort and I appreciate that because I am not a decorator either, but this just gives it such a beautiful look and it's gonna go into my oven at 350 for about a half an hour. It'll be really beautiful golden brown on top. I'm gonna leave it in the pan for 10 minutes and then I'm going to put it on cooler racks so that they can cool completely. And then we slice and serve. These are gorgeous. Remember, they were in the oven for 30 minutes. I left them in there in their pans. Oh, it's so soft. I left them in their pans for 10 minutes, then I put them on a wire rack to cool completely. It's not cool completely. It's still very, very, very warm. You can probably even see the steam, but I couldn't help it. Best. Best brioche ever. Go to my channel. Mm, my website. Can't think. Go to laurenmukitchen.com, get the recipe. You'll love it. Bye. Capito? Metà? Tu fai il cilindro, fai un po' Eh, tu la metà metti in qua. No, Fai le piccoline.
E dai, io che sto qua, guarda! Guarda! Che sta qua, no? Più grande! E faccio un pilulare di rotondo, ok? E qui lo stesso. Guardate qua, le piccole e poi lo unisci. Cresce e poi vai tutto qua. Oh, quello che rimane. Ma la fa tre? No, tu vuoi pigliare pure la formetta piccola e fai che devo tu. E fai il brioche che hanno detto. No, la tela ci mette la roppa. Eh, roppa, eh. Allora, questo è un basso qua, un metto qua o un metto direttamente in due ruote? Metto l'uovo, c'è molto altro. Non è bastato. We're making brioche, but we're making a couple different kinds. There's one that's like the typical, that everyone like knows, it's sweet, like bun. And then you come to Italy, you gotta add some cheeses and meats in it. So that's what we're making in one half. Signora, non è così che siamo con me zingaro? No. Fa niente, fa niente. Oh, questo. Oh, ma colla. E quando lui va a Cadinda? Ma perché non si vede che non... Non si vede che non si vede. 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 Non si vede Niente un po', come è che faccio che fanno niente perché deve niente come una cosa tipo... Basta così, te la non più buona, no? Qua, non ti metto. Non metto più buona. Niente, oggi a lei mi sembra. Mettila in dentro. No, no, si sta assai. La gente la viene più grossa. Ma tu lì, lì, lì. Lì è un po', come è che faccio che fanno niente perché deve niente come una cosa tipo... Che ti viene una cosa facendo. Ora te la farò. Piccole così. Perché questi qua, questi... Tu fai piccoli, medi, medi, medi e poi le Non è più grosso, è una sua grossa. Però questi faccio fare che non può essere, si vede come esce. No, no. Eh no. Eh no. È una provola. È una provola. Non 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 Facciamolo piccoli, eh? Tu saltano dalla mezza. Le mezze riposate. Ma tu dici, ma questo è un attimo, no? Did you see my grandma the phone would do? Ma rispondete a te. Ci sei, Dan? Yeah. Vanno a te, Laura. Era anche mamma.